It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock, and I hope that you're having fun. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it is another DJ roundtable. And as always, we have some great DJs on here tonight. Some faces we didn't have here last week, and some faces we were missing this week. Uh, again, we have some people who are working, uh, have one person who's not feeling well. Uh, and then, you know, again, people have other things going on. As always, I thank you very much for tuning in. And, and if you are new to the channel, thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you're new to the show, thank you for coming and stopping by. It's greatly appreciated. And as always, hopefully you're having a fun time. If you have any comments, critique, criticisms, please put it down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, help me slay that beast called the algorithm over there at YouTube. And do me a favor, hit that like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure you tickle the bell icon, and do one more thing, share the episode with someone else. That helps out with the, sh the show to grow as well as the channel to grow, and more people watch it, well, guess what? More I can do. <laughs> um, the other thing also, if you're here on Twitch, uh, thank you so much, you do it live on Twitch on Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time. If you're in the East Coast, that's 9 o'clock. If you people on the West Coast, that is 6 p.m., a little bit after dinner time for some. For others, it's not even dinner yet. Like Matt, he usually runs out and eats dinner at the end of the show. <laughs> so with that said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I hopefully you had some fun. As always, we are always working on things, and one of the things just happened and came through was DJ X in Atlantic City. Uh, I did not go, but I do know someone who did go, and that person is Matt. Uh, he was our kind of our roving reporter there. I saw some pictures of him with uh, some other great DJs out there. Um, Matt, a couple quick things for you. First thing first, how was your flight? Because I heard a lot of flights got delayed, especially from the West Coast. And then the other part was, did you get any good pizza out there? uh yes so uh no problems with flights um i was very lucky i flew united uh my first flight went out because i was djing back to back to back weddings the weekend before i drove down to lax uh took a little nap in the cargo van and then uh finally got on the plane at around i think flight left at seven ish uh got in at 3 30 uh jersey time got there early no problems with the planes uh smooth flight I did go to Hoboken first, and I did find some great pizza, one of Dave Portnoy's reviewed places. But last night, we went to a pizza place here in Irvine, and it's the best pizza I've ever had in my life. So uh, it's Sergeant Pepperoni's. If you're ever in Irvine, Sergeant Pepperoni's, phenomenal. Absolutely the best pizza you could have. Uh, but the Hoboken one was pretty good. Just a little, the slices are a little, you guys in, in that side, like, I don't want a big slice that I have to fold or anything like that. Like a slice should be properly sliced size, not like Costco size. I don't like that. Um, but anyway, uh, that was good. Got into the show. You want me to just do the whole rundown while I'm, I'm, I'm here? Yeah, talk, the, talk a little bit about the show. What was, I'll ask you this question. What yes. coming from the show, what were the three coolest new products or coolest booths you saw there at the sure. show? So, uh, got into Atlantic City at 10, um, first night, Sunday night, Monday night, Monday night, first night, Monday night was the disco party. Uh, it was at HQ2, which is at Oceans, which is a really nice new casino there. Um, so that was cool. Ran into a bunch of people. That's where the picture with Rick Webb was from. So I was piling around with DJ Envision, uh, his friend Romantics, Wyatt, um, and then two other, other friends, Mike Napoli over there was with us too. And so we all kind of palled around, went to the nightclub. It was disco-ish themed. The DJs were eh. Like some of the transitions were bad and some of the timing was bad. Sound system was bad. Yeah, I've never seen a turbo sound line array, but that's first. Um, did not sound. It sounded about as good as a turbo sound line array would sound. But the club was cool. Um, drinks were cheap. It was $8 beers. So you can't really argue with that. Um, and... Ran into Rick Webb there. Hi, Kevin. Um, 
Joe Bunn was had a table. I didn't get a chance. He's the only one I didn't really get a chance to talk to. Uh, he had a whole table with the SE guys. Um, who else? A few other people. First night, though, like we probably got back around one in the morning, slept, uh, woke up, went to the show. Um, I did some work Tuesday morning before heading out because I had weddings the next week. So woke up, went to the show around uh, 12, grabbed lunch at 11, happened to run into uh, Eric Massingale from uh, you know Rick Webb's friend over there in Dow Oak Events. Talked to him for a little bit. He was pretty cool. Um, and then went into the show. And uh, in terms of stuff that impressed me, I mean, like, it's it's very small. Coming from Nam, I was very, like, unimpressed. I was like, wow, this is tiny. It's literally just, you know, maybe 25 or so booths in, maybe 30, uh, in the stadium of the Hard Rock area. So they have a main stage they didn't really do much for, but both lighting had a big booth, uh, a bunch of their lights on display. So, uh, you know, they had some cool stuff. They had some DJs demoing stuff. Um booths that i was like impressed by really though i mean joe bunn has a really cool new um booth coming out that's kind of like the horrorboard uh the curved one that's like just a white table that you know looks like a solid piece of furniture joe bunn has like a prototype on display that's going to be a folding version of that which is cool so it's more transportable although i think a single piece is what makes it sleek so it's not transportable um Ray was there from Top Light. He had some, uh, his booth was getting a lot of traffic with the the TV and on display and all that. So saw that in person. A um, couple photo booth companies, Chevet booth didn't really have anything new. Um, those weird little gay bar things are very unimpressive that they've been pushing on the idea sharing group. They're very tiny and not very much output. Oh, you're talking uh, about the, two li the, the little ones? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's really yeah. Here's the thing silly. about this, and I, I've I've seen a few people talk about it, and they're not it, it, they're, they're, they're they are what they are. They're not designed to be like a full on moving head with a you know 100 watt LED. They're designed to be put up in multiple areas, so you can have small little mini T bars raised up around an area and kind of cover a dance floor. Or if you were to do some kind of permanent install have multiple areas, multiple zones, the lights in different areas. So I've seen some people say you could put like four or five across a bar and then raise it up and you have all these little moving heads. Or I've also seen people say, hey, I'll put, you know, one single one on a T-bar here, one T-bar here, one there. And I could have four of them around the dance floor, around a room. So I spread the light out. That way it's not one country in one area and give a different look to it. So that's what I saw a couple people who talk about it. I think, again, I think it's a cool concept depending on how you execute it. It's like any other tool you look at any light or any speaker or anything. If you execute it successfully, it works. If you don't execute successfully, it kind of stinks. And that, that's that's like any tool, you know, and that's something new. People are going to find unique use for it. Just got to keep your eyes open and watch what's happening. Um, so, so Chave, you weren't you we weren't too impressed with the the new yeah. uh, light. Um, the thing what that else? was cool, is I think. Uh, I mean, you know, there were, they had some demo rooms upstairs. It was obviously scaled down, so Base Boss didn't blow anybody away. RCF didn't blow anybody away. Um, I didn't really like the RCF room. I didn't like any of the speakers. I think they all sounded a bit too harsh. But uh, um, what was it? Yorkville has a dual ten inch powered battery powered subwoofer. That was pretty cool. Uh, only power, only battery powered sub on the market. Definitely hits pretty nice. Um, well, uh, but, well, did you see what the map price was on it? No, they didn't have pricing yet. But um, I I think like if you're gonna go that battery powered route, just get the Maui Five Go instead, because then it's all in one unit. But um, that was cool. Uh, ran into Cleveland Terry. People, a lot of people recognize me from YouTube, uh, which was cool. Um, Tuesday night, I think Tuesday was my favorite party. That was the DOS Audio one um, that had this guy, DJ Puffy, who's like a Caribbean, like mix master Red Bull DJ. Dude was absolutely incredible. I mean, just, just incredible. And uh, that was probably the best like vibe out of any of the parties because it was out on the patio. Everyone was talking, like got to talk Spinelli a bit, uh, talk with Santi, talk with a bunch of other guys that I had known, um, a couple other YouTubers I followed that I recognized there. And uh yeah, Tuesday was my favorite day. 
And then Wednesday, I didn't really, I went to the show for maybe an hour on Wednesday, just see, just to see Laidback Luke on the main stage. That was cool. And then uh, just went to the party on Wednesday night. Um, that one was a different vibe. Nobody was really digging what was being played inside after. So like they had Digital Dave, they had Big Daddy and like all the the cool crew up first. And then they went into like 40 years of house music, but it was like house house, not like tech house. So most people just kind of went out on the patio and that's where I ran into Jay and um brian s red and uh, the road dog and i talked to travis mcguire he he and i are, are best friends now uh we definitely chatted a bit his wife is really funny she's great um so I talked to him for maybe probably like an hour honestly um and uh yeah so he was cool and uh talked to lou paris for a bit also so uh, i think things are patched there uh so i said oh i'm two or three one more i just gotta talk to rachel then i'll be back in the group uh the dj help desk but uh who else uh i think that's pretty much it um yeah just met a lot of people it was great times uh had a blast um the third day wednesday we finally found like um wednesday afternoon i found a little hole in the wall mexican place got some delicious birria for lunch and then at dinner there's a place called stacy's maybe i don't remember the name but it was like soul food <laughs> incredible um and uh yeah then thursday i didn't stick around thursday i uh left go to six flags over in jackson township in the middle of nowhere new jersey which was awesome it was like raining but not really it was just kind of overcast and there was maybe 300 people in the whole theme park so walked on to every roller coaster had myself a blast got back to jersey flew home charged some stuff up when i got here that flight was delayed 20 minutes but uh no problems otherwise and then did a wedding Friday. It was an amazing. And then uh, flew out to Colorado Saturday for another wedding. That was incredible. I'm going through all the content right now. And uh, flew back Sunday morning, did a wedding Sunday night. And here we are two days later, caught up on sleep finally. There you go. And then um, one of the things also with um, everything out there at uh, DJX, um, I, I again, NAM is more... NAM is more for like retailers more than for the end users that and exactly. they're, they have everyone there at NAM and again you've been there plenty of times you've guitar manufacturers and drum manufacturers and a lot of music manufacturers and this is more this is designed more for the DJs um and the great thing about you know like DJX or some of the other DJ ones is that because it's designed more for the DJs, they always look for feedback. So if you guys have been to uh, DJX and you guys will get feedback, make sure you contact people there who run the show and give them some feedback, give them positive feedback. Say, hey, I'd like to see this or see that at the show. And, you know, Matt, I'm glad you hear that you have fun time out there. You enjoyed yourself out there in uh, Jersey. I'm glad to hear that uh, you get to talk to a bunch of people. So the last follow-up question I have for you with everything was there anyone who you met uh, that you would like to see come on the show here and talk on uh, the round table? Um, I think DJ and Envision would be would be good to have. Because, um, like, they do over there, they do, like, he's in, there's a music style over there that none of us really play called Jersey Club. That's, like, um, their style and, like, Tuesday night, the guy's style was, like, very choppy and, like, but, it, but it's just like hard hitting, fast paced mixing instead of like nice gradual transitions. It's like a lot of uh, tone play, a lot of like not word play trickery, but just like timing and scratching and slam mixing. And I think somebody like that would be useful to have because like that's a, it's a totally different style that we don't do out here. Um, so maybe well, him. Uh, East Coast versus like West Coast, you know, and then us the Midwest have a whole other thing. We have people in the South have a whole other thing. So there's always different areas, different things. So that'd be interesting. So I would say if you want to uh, reach out to them, uh, you know, reach out to uh, who you think you'd like to see. Because, again, you have that now personal connection uh, mm -hmm. much more than I have. So, <laughs> yeah, everybody, but, um, everybody was really nice there. The only person that I didn't really feel was was too uh, pleasant was um, uh, not not pleasant. Just he, he just wasn't really like talkative was uh, this guy, Nate Acosta. He's pretty big on youtube he's out in dallas but i think he was more just kind of there for you know i'm I'm here but i don't really want to same thing with spinelli i didn't really like i, I don't know I, I tried talking to him but I, I think he has that kind of like look at me i'm famous mentality 
to where like, you know, he'll chat with you, but if he's not, I just didn't feel like he was actually wanting to chat with anybody. So and again, it, different people, you know, you meet different people and different attitudes, different personalities. And that's, that's a great thing about, uh, you know, uh, DJ conventions like that is you have time to do that. So we got some more DJs in here while I was talking and while Matt was talking, uh, you know, glad to see all you guys here. And unfortunately I know, uh, uh, one half of the uh, Wonder Couple is not feeling 100%. Hopefully, they're going to speed recovery. Uh, but we do have the boss here, so she can uh, she can at answer for both. That's great, as always. And it's always great to have you guys on here. Um, I want to start off with Jeff uh, with this uh, really quick question. I know you, you didn't go. I didn't go. You know, uh, now all of us got a chance to go to DJX. But did you see anything on any kind of media that came out from DJX that you were interested in or that you thought that you saw was pretty cool that you saw on social media or on anything that um, for new product, party, or anything that you saw that you thought was really cool at DJX from, again, from a, a spectator like myself? I have not. Uh, honestly, I haven't seen very little, if anything, from DJX uh, on social media. So um, I have been kind of off the grid, if you will, for the past week and a half or so. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, you know, I've got two boys in soccer. I've been really busy with that, and uh, and I've been working on a, uh, a project in the basement. So uh, you know, I've been doing some hammering and some sawing. Uh, I really haven't had the opportunity to really delve into some of my social media uh, contacts and uh, followers and following. And uh, But I hope to do that over the next uh, week or so and see what's out there. But honestly, I don't have a, um, a big wish list right now. Um, but uh, it's always fun to shop, you know, even if it's just, uh, you know, window shopping. But um, yeah, so, you know, we'll um, we'll play it by ear. But I have not seen anything uh recently okay all right uh, mr dixon over there in the beautiful state of ohio have you seen anything on your social media or anything like that that uh for djx anything from the expo that you might have caught your eye that new product or some kind of booth or party or any kind of information whatsoever that you thought was really cool from the the show uh, no i really haven't been looking at it but I have been eyeing a couple of lights, like the Rockville R four one, I believe it is the battery part wireless ones, and the B Topper seven X forty W moving head. That looked interesting, so I've just been eyeing that. But nothing in particular that's dealing with the DJ Expo. You know, the, speaking of B-Topper, uh, I know B-Topper is getting higher and higher, um, more and more commercials. Uh, they seem like they're going up against sh uh, Shed's uh, lighting. And I know that um, DJ Fire, who's not here tonight, he has stuff from B-Topper and from Shed's, and he's done reviews and unboxings with their products. And it seems like B-Topper is trying to go after Sheds uh, with product. And that, again, for us as a consumer, it's great, to, you know, when you have competition and it makes both companies look at, hey, what's the next product? What's the next new product? Um, and it should be interesting to see if they do something in pricing and stuff like that, some of their equipment. So I would definitely would say that, you know, for us as consumers, you know, uh, for us as, you know, purchasers and so forth, our dollar will go further with that kind of competition. <clears throat> and I think it's healthy competition. It's, I don't see anything bad. I just see, you know, B-Topper, you know, they have this, and then the Sheds comes out with something similar, and then Sheds come out with this, and then B-Topper comes out with something similar. So it, it looks like two different companies, healthy competition between the two of them. And, you know, again, both of them will uh, work things out, but it's kind of nice for us, and hopefully uh, you're uh, – your light will actually come down price a little bit and you can snag it up for a deal then, you know, that's always good. <laughs> Is there anything else you've been keeping your eye on besides that B topper or? Mm, nope, not really. All right. And then I'm going to go to my other Southern DJ other than Jeff. Jeff, I have one other Southern DJ and that is cool thing. Cool thing, Hunter. So what do you, uh, have you saw anything on, on social media or anything like that for is that DJX or? 
anything that you saw exciting or for product wise or anything you heard? Not, well, not really. I don't really follow DJ X and, you know, and I haven't seen any videos. And if I do, I skip over them to go to even, like more interesting content, like gig logs and stuff. And I haven't really, you know, had my mind on anything because I'm good with what I've got. As long as my product or as long as my DJ gear works, I'm fine. I have no need to upgrade or get anything new as of right now. So I haven't been following anything of DJX. I just recently bought a brand new speaker called the JBL Party Box 110. It's got lights. It's got all kinds of stuff on it that I'll be using for ceremony, use it for a lot of like battery powered setups it's gonna be awesome so be on the lookout for the product unboxing guys if you are following me on my youtube make sure you look up for the product unboxing yeah and that that's that is a great thing that you know having a little extra stuff uh one of the things i did this past week speaking of uh, dj fire uh i got a chance to go down uh drive two and a half hours uh almost three hours south and dropped off uh uh, set of my older uh, speakers uh, that I haven't used in a while. I, I you know, send him some pictures. Say, hey, this is I got them for sale. He's like, yeah, I want them. He used them as, uh, for a gig this past weekend. Um, you know, they're just sitting there. They were I have used them probably a handful of times. You know, and it's it's nice to have a product that you know I have or I had and able to sell it to someone that they're going to actually use it versus. I don't want to be a collection of products and collection of items. <laughs> so Taylor mm -hmm. over there in beautiful Indiana, and I, hopefully you're having some fun and looking at stuff. Did you happen to see anything on social media or on anything about DJX? And if so, what kind of caught your eye? If you did see something. No, I didn't really see it. And, um, I mean, and if I do, I kind of scroll past too. It doesn't interest me too much. <laughs> Jordan probably <laughs> looks at that stuff more, but me, honestly, I was just, I, uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. I doesn't excite me. <laughs> I, 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 you know, what? I saw a few things on social media. I saw it was pretty cool. Uh, some of the parties look pretty cool. Um, I know our friends over at uh, Dish Jackie News. They had their uh, chill the event. Parties were the best. <laughs> they had their chill event. I know that was pretty cool. I, I wish I could have gone there to go see some of the guys I know over there. Um, <clears throat> I know that. Um, I, I know that you know a couple products they did uh, show out, but not anything really crazy. I think Nam when it comes up in was it uh, with Nam was it February right, uh, Matt? February, yeah. I yes. think we're going to see in January, uh, January, January, January. Okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember top of my head. I think they're going to see some cool products then. Um, and I see you, Kevin. Thank you for coming in. Uh, you got a sheds light sh saved for $80. Um, more than a holding lamp that looks identical. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is that again, competition, you know, the other, other brand also look at is you King. I have a couple of small little baby you King lights. They're, 20 watts if I remember correctly there are two of them small little 20 watt uh lights moving heads there are two of them I think for like a hundred and they I got 190 I think they're down to like 170 dollars on uh eBay uh not eBay on Amazon so if you're looking for some cool little lights that's cool uh so Taylor I know uh, last week you were here you were busy uh, working on other things um the other thing also is that when I was talking to your husband last week now I get to talk to you this week uh the uh, e equipment that you guys do and the equipment you guys use and stuff like that for everything, when you go to replace your equipment and you go to buy new equipment, you're like, hey, I need to replace it, replace this. Is there, you're the one that looks for it or is it more uh, your husband looks more for it for the new gear? It's more Jordan. I mean, he'll send it to me and ask me what I think and he'll yeah, be like, opinion, you know, I'm yeah. thinking for that, but um, that's more his thing. Okay. Um, I mean, I know what he sends me, and I know how to hook everything up, oh, and yeah, I know how yeah. to. I mean, but like when it comes to looking into things and seeing what's new and what's good, I'm just, you know, I 
don't ask me. I'm so out of the loop. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I don't but know. we know you're a good DJ, though. That we know, I do know. Oh yeah, like my my thing is like I'm never really interested in the equipment. I'm more of the I like the music. I love listening to music. I love you know it's all I do. I play instruments. I do all that. So that's more my interest in it. Um, but no, I do like going to um, like the shows and seeing like the cool stuff that they have out. But do I really know what I'm looking at half the time now? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> You know, I, I keep on teasing this, you know, because everyone here, almost everyone here plays instruments. Uh, we should start a band, have the DJ Roundtable band here. We have. <laughs> I know we should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, Brentley's I, got, he's got to use the, um, he's got to play guitar. He's got thrash on a guitar. I'm, I, I'm, like, singer. You know, I'm like, that, that's I'm the best way for him. I don't play I'm guitar different. anymore. I only play upright bass and mandolin. We don't touch guitars. Oh, come on. You got to touch a I'm guitar, man. I'm pretentious. <laughs> so do play the guitar? I'm pretty I'm, I'm yeah. like, here. No, I'm, I'm a pretty, pretty good singer. Playing, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like a jazz player looking at a rock musician. Uh, or Because <laughs> I play bluegrass, you know, I, mm. I look snobbly down upon the country players. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so, I'm pretty uh, good singer. <laughs> Brantley, when I get to you... Um, since you want to add in there about the play instruments, uh, for, uh, if you could judge a vibe by hair, that's first thing. Second thing, if you could do me a favor is, did you see anything on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know, whatever, uh, anything on DJX and did anything catch your eye from DJX? No, I mean, there is nothing I really need right now. If I, I would be stupid to be buying any more gear. Honest to God's truth. Although the folks at Sheds keep bothering me, and I've got the 1930, the 19 by 30 or 19 by 35 moving heads down to 500 bucks with shipping. So I'm really considering that and then dumping a bunch of lights I don't use or need anymore. Which, it's been my ongoing conversation with myself, and yeah, I've dumped some gear this year, like hot passive subs I haven't used in three years, finally got sold. Stuff like that. But there's nothing I can think of that I really need. If it if I could afford it or if I, you know, the money fell on my lap, by all means I'd be getting a pair of CDJs and an A9, the new A in a heartbeat. Just for maybe personal use more than anything else, but that's about it. So it's interesting that uh, not so bad that Sheds has talked to you. Um, I think they talked to Matt too. Uh, Taylor, have they talked to you or Jordan about uh, lights? Not no. Sheds or B topper? No. Dwayne? Mm -hmm. Nope. Uh, Jeff? Nope. No. Hunter? Nope. I'm not that lucky. <laughs> Never. Well, <laughs> It's it, it, it's interesting who they I'm reach out to sometimes yeah, uh, and ask to, to get a review. Uh, yeah. I know again, uh, uh, DJ Fire uh, Nathan because he does a lot of the unboxings and also uh, Mike James, both of them do a lot of unboxings and stuff like that and show the stuff. They get a lot of products to review. I know I was talking to um, Nathan uh, when I saw him. I had lunch with him. We we're talking a little bit. He has like thirty or forty items and it's not just lights it's all these different companies you know say review this review that because you know he has his landscaping business he has all the other businesses and he has all these people trying to have him review whatever it is the products are so maybe uh brentley would start getting other stuff too uh sent to him you know for reviews <laughs> or man yeah. you know that's always interesting I, I don't review things though my thing is you know i and i guess it's fairly you know obvious in my in the gear i own I'm more about getting the, you know, not getting the free stuff, getting the gear I need, want to produce what I'm doing right now, you know, and the cost effectiveness, maybe I should be more concerned with, but I'm definitely not at this point. I'm more concerned with charging the right amount of money for my packages with the right equipment to do what these couples want. So getting gear for free to, you know, do reviews on or whatever, it's not my thing. It really isn't. I, I mean, I've done it, you know, a few things that I've had even like Phoenix Pro years ago. But yeah, I would rather just buy what I need and keep moving. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that, you know, 
a lot of stuff that we all buy it's with our money it's hard earned money that uh we're spending on equipment be it you know whatever it is and you know it's nice that the manufacturer says hey you know why don't you um once you review this it will send you something but a lot of times i i have heard it from um uh from um from nathan is that they'll send one light hey that, that's great in theory you know one single light in theory but most of us need two lights because you know one here one you know one there you need two lights to do something especially two moving heads or you know having one light it it could be a good thing but having two lights always is is much better and i know he battles uh sometimes with some of the manufacturer hey send me two lights so i can put them up and give you a show when i do a event and that's that's a, that's the a hard part is you know i understand why they're not just say hey here's a bunch of gear but i also understand you need to kind of say hey you know uh here's uh here's two pieces because you're going to use it so when you uh hunt up uh, hunter uh uh, Brantley, when you uh, look at the stuff, the gear and stuff like that for, you know, uh, from them for they're trying to get you to buy the lights. Uh, and again, I know you don't do reviews, you don't do unboxings and stuff like that too much. But are they more or less looking for a review or are they looking for an unboxing? Or what are they looking for from you? I, I think we haven't gotten that far in the conversation, but I made it pretty clear with the person who hit me up that. A, I'm really not looking to buy any gear. B, if you're offering something, yeah, I'll put there, you know, I would do a review on all of my social media platforms. And if this is what the only product I'm really interested in of yours currently are the three things I said to her. And she came back with, the, you know, this is how much we would do everything for. Basically, buy one of them, get one free. And I'm like, me with the hard shell. And now we're, you know, that comes right, you know, just under 500, like over 500. And I'm like, can you do it for five? And she's like, I think so. And at that point, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And like I said, I've got two light trees with lights I don't use anymore. I can strip them down and sell them. It'd be like, you know, I've got four like Top Shine or Lixada moving heads four Kenta lights, which one the club I run in here in La Crosse and book at, I'm pretty sure wants them. So I'd be like, here, hundred bucks a Kenta the yours. Cool. Get those out of my hair. If you want the moving heads, I'd sell you those, but I'm pretty sure they don't. And those I'd Facebook along with, you know, I've got a few other odds and ends and I would pay for itself and probably make a few bucks. And that's the thing is that, you know, we do it old gear, which is going to be my next question here. I'm going to start with Jeff. Uh, and when we get to the end of life of gear and equipment, uh, again, we sometimes like to store it. Like, again, I have speakers that I'm storing and some other stuff. And, again, I just sold a pair of speakers that were just sitting there in the case, in in the, in, in bags uh, to, uh, to Nathan. But the thing is that when you get gear sitting there for a while, how long before you say, hey, I need to get rid of it? Is it a year, two years? three years or is it just like hey as soon as you're done with it i got a new replacement do you try to get onto the market right away what do you usually try to do uh for your gear jeff when you try to get rid of the older stuff um there's really no time uh you know set limit uh it's basically when you or when i am cleaning out my basement and uh and i've come across some stuff okay i haven't used these in like a year or two uh, there's really no time, but I mean, I just this past, um, I think it was in, uh, March or April, I sold, uh, some lights that I have not used in a while. So, you know, I just, um, you know, put them up for sale and they went pretty quick, uh, probably priced them too cheap, but, uh, you know, got, got money for them. And before they were just sitting, you know, on the rack in the basement and, uh, we're doing nothing. So, um, you know, it's one of those those things where, you know, you just got to make the call at some point. You know, if you're not using it, uh, can you, you know, still get good money for it? If somebody willing to buy it, is it so outdated that you just hold on to it for, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, stupid reasons? But, um, you know, it's like I've got an old. Um, 
an old iPhone four here. Yeah, you know, still got the box for it. <laughs> no one would want to buy this, you know. But you know, in a few more years, you know, a tiny little iPhone four may be worth something. You never know. Um, so, so, you know, the, the, the good thing is, you know, you, you can hold on to it. It might sell. Bad thing is, you know, you, you missed that, that point where it was worth something to sell and get money for it. So that's the hard part is, um, is knowing when to sell it, um, and not holding on to it too long. So, well, I, I will tell you this, I have a, I have actually in, I have a cure cabin out front. I have in the cure cabin, I have a, uh, Nokia Engage phone, which is the video game phone they came out with that you talk like a taco. I had a StarTech with the extra back uh, battery that sits on the back. Um, and I have, uh, Tracy has a PT550 flip phone, which is the original gray mole roll flip phone you pull the bottom down. Uh, I have it there in the, the cabinet uh, to display some older phone tech, as well as uh, Tracy's dad's uh, AT and T Nokia phone with the nice little pull up antenna and nice almost a little baby brick, not full size brick, not the full size Motorola, the rubber antenna on top. But it, it's amazing sometimes. They yeah, some of that stuff you're like, oh, I want to get rid of. They're like, no, that's like classic stuff. My you know granddaughter comes over and looks at it and says. Wow, this, this this is a phone? Like, yeah, that's a phone. That's what we used to talk on. Uh, yeah, you can't do uh, video chat like you can now. So, but it's always fun. And again, getting rid of the equipment. Uh, I have more equipment I'm going to get rid of, but it's like, uh, when do I find time to sell it? That's the other part. How, you know, you, again, you've stumbled across a couple of things and sold it. Uh, it. It's making time to do that. And sometimes with uh, life and everything gets in the way. Um and I'm glad that you got a chance to sell some older stuff, but I would definitely keep the iPhone 4. Even though I'm not an Apple guy, I would definitely say keep that because that's a cool thing, cool conversation piece. Yep. It's all Hunt Hunter, what about you? When you get to the end of life of stuff or you find stuff that you replaced, uh, how long do you usually try to keep it for before you try to get rid of it? you try to get rid of it right away? Do you try to oh. just say, hey, I'm going to keep it? Do you keep it as a reserve? What do you do? Yeah, I actually keep it as a backup. Like, I still have my Ion Audio Tope Maxes. I have my Rockville Rock Bar 50s. I got my old Mao Park hands. I got everything when I first became a DJ, like, five or six years ago. And, yeah, I keep it for backup or if I ever need it for a, a DJ gig or whatever I need. I always keep it as a backup. And I always keep it till it falls apart. When it falls apart, I take it to the dump. Mm -hmm. Okay, you take it. You just take it right to the dump then, and when it falls apart, then yeah, when so it falls you, apart, yeah. So you use it, the wheels fall off, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So no useful life when you get done with it. Okay, that's that's yeah. you're using the full life of everything. That's that's actually not a bad thing. Dwayne, what about you? When you get to the end of when you have something you replace with new something new, or you get to the end of its life, and you're like, hey, someone else can get it. Uh, what do you do? What do you usually try to keep holding on it? Do you try to get rid of it right away? Do you try to, you know, do you try to recycle it, resell it, take it to the dump like Hunter does and toss it into the great uh, pile? What, what do you usually do? Actually, I'm a, like a hoarder. So you go <laughs> to my basement and attic, you see tons and tons of old keyboards. And when Jeff pulled out his iPhone, I still have my iPhone 4. I still have my original Game Boy. I still have the uh, original first generation iPod and all that. So I got my wife keep telling me I need to get rid of a bunch of stuff. But <laughs> I, I laugh at it, not because uh, I feel the pain because Tracy says the same thing with me with some of the things I need to get rid of too. It's like... I don't want to get rid of it, you know, like I got my this laptop. Toshiba tablet, right? This Toshiba tablet. This Toshiba laptop right here. This has tractor on it. <laughs> I have tractor on this computer. And it's not like a new oh. copy of tractor. This is like this computer's from I don't know. Uh oh I want to say it's 08, 09, this computer. Oh, <laughs> 2008, wow. 2009, and I still have tractor on it from from then. So, uh, yeah. So, 
<laughs> you're not the only one hoarding. Tracy calls me a hoarder, but it's like, uh, I just like, I, there's music on there. I need to get off of it and stuff like that. I need to find a power supply for it. I think we recycled the power supply for that one. Um, not, re not knowing that re remember I had that computer yeah. and then she's like, Hey, I found this computer. I'm like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't want to get rid of that. <laughs> That's from when I was a teenager. I was like 14 or 15. When we got that computer, I was 14 or 15. I'm 30. <laughs> Well, I, I'm I'm a tad older than you are, Hunter. So you know, I, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, let's see here. Kevin saying uh, rental gear. That's a, that's an actually a smart idea. Taking your yeah. older stuff and renting it. Uh, <laughs> from oh my, oh my. <laughs> So Taylor, you and Jordan, I'm sure you guys have some stuff that you, you know, retire or that you don't find use for, and especially everything mm -hmm. you do with all the irons you have in your fire for your business. What do you usually do with your older stuff, your older gear? So usually if if we find something or if there's something in the storage unit and we, we tell ourselves if we haven't used it in a year, we're selling it. So we just sell it if it, we haven't used it. Um Usually Jordan, you know, we'll ask people that we know that, you know, could use it or um, like when we sold our old speakers, we sold them to a band like we, you know, we kind of stay in, you know, around that group. And yeah, I mean, just sell it <laughs> so we could buy new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the thing. You're always it's like you sell one thing, you're like, ah, oh, get some money. What do I do? Oh, I'm gonna buy some stuff, you know. That's, uh, yeah, we're always like just off to the next thing. <laughs> that, I think that's that. a unique thing about our business than a lot other. If you, if you go to a plumber or an electrician, you know, you they can have a tool last for the whole entire their whole entire career doing whatever and into retirement. There's tools from uh, Tracy's dad that we have when he was an electrician for uh, the electric company. Um, in house electrician at the power plant, and those tools still because they're they're tools, they're you know screwdrivers and wrenches and stuff like that, and other tools that you know will never wear out, and you still you can still use them and pass them on. But the thing is that DJ gear is a little different because especially with lighting or batteries, sometimes you got to replace batteries, and I've replaced batteries on stuff, and you know you can repair things, and that's one of the things. Also, uh, certain manufacturers getting. Uh, parts for it it's always great to do that too so you can refresh your older gear uh, i actually saw on uh was it i want to say dj sharing ideas uh someone repainted uh, a 20 year old uh, microphone a, a sennheiser microphone they they painted it white and i'm like why you're painting a 20 year old microphone okay you, I, I guess you want to keep it i look at more of the frequencies and stuff especially the fcc change of frequencies but he said they're still good at frequencies. I'm like, eh, okay, 20 years is still working. Hey, God bless. You know, uh, that's a great thing. But also you got to look at, you know, some gear sunsetting and looking at getting the next, next generation of stuff too. Cause a lot of times manufacturers come out with the second gen, but yeah, it, it's, it's always interesting. So I know up in Wisconsin, uh, Brentley has to deal with, uh, knowing the, all the videos on code blue cam with his fellow P uh, Wisconsin nights. And also had to deal with everything else that goes on in the beautiful city of La Crosse. Uh, and Co Blue Can is busy with their videos of everything going on there. But uh, I'm sure between those uh, uh, excitement periods of time that the police are involved with uh, some of your uh, neighbors, uh, you're selling gear to other DJs or to bands or whatever. How long do you keep gear for and how long, how fast you try and get it out of uh, your house? Well, I, I won't lie that I'm kind of like Lane with the hoarding of gear because when it comes, like before I moved to lacrosse, I think I had 30 guitars alone. And when I moved up here, I sold down to probably maybe having 12 instruments total. So I was, you know, that was going from like 30 guitars, a few, you know, a ton of electric basses and all that. So with DJ gear, I'm kind of the same way. But I know, unlike musical equipment, it has a shelf life. And like my old EV subs, they were probably almost 10 years old and passive. And had I sold them three years ago, I probably could have gotten 200 a speaker. 
when I let go of them this year, I got, I, I want to say maybe 150, 200 bucks for the whole pair. So I try like, and again, with the lights I'm sitting on there, I, I looked online and their shelf life is starting to drop. So if I'm going to make the move to dump them, it's got to be by the end of this year before, you know, they go from a hundred dollars down to like 50 or 25 when the new Chauvet ILS stuff comes out. And then I've, you know, so I'm going to say two, three years, as long as I'm going to keep something, you know, without using it. I mean, I'll make exceptions of that. Like, you know, do I have backup mains to my backup mains? Yes. And I'm not going to go, you know, sell those off, but you know, lights, other odds and ends, you know, not cabling, but you know, Amp amplifiers. Uh, I've still got two Behringer NX 1000s that I haven't moved, and I'm I put them up. I put it up on a uh, Facebook Marketplace once, and I got lowballed a couple times. So my intention now is just to put it, you know. But I had a case on it, so I'm just gonna put the amp up independently and see if I can just sell that separately, and see how all that goes. We lost uh, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it it's, it is interesting, you know, especially with uh, you know, get, uh, musical gear like be it keyboards, be it drums, be it stuff like that versus DJ gear. Our, our gear is much more unique because controllers, uh, you know, CDJs, you know, even like, you know, now now you get a pair of Technics 1200, especially some of the older ones, they'll go on forever, you know, you 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 keep them in, you know, dust free, you keep them clean. Uh, they'll go on forever, you know, Technics 1200s. But if you look at some of the other stuff, you know, you, you get, you have a, you know, I have an SX2, still works. But the thing is that now it's, that's, that's now very dated. They don't support it anymore. You know, uh, I have two CDJs and, a, a, you know, a C, and a, a Nexus 900 mixer. Now they're on the second or third generation of that mixer. And the CDJs are on, a, you know, they're beyond the 900 series. So, it, it, it's one of the things that, yeah, that you come to an end with it and you look at stuff and go, hey, you know, what is the life of something? But also if you can sell to someone and they can use it and, you know, you have stuff sitting there, you should be able to talk to someone and say, hey, uh, hey, uh, you know, so-and-so, are you looking for anything? Hey, I got these lights or I got this. And, you know, they're sitting there just collecting dust they're not doing anyone anything. I'd much rather have someone using them and making sure that they enjoy it and they're they're useful versus just sitting there and you know take up space. And that's that's the that's the big thing with anything with electronics. You want to make sure you have that uh, out of the way. Uh, Matt, you there or Matt, you asleep? I think he's asleep. <laughs> he might ran off for dinner. I, oh, I'm. So far, we haven't got uh, Dwayne back. I don't know what happened. Um, Everyone's dropping like flies. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, now that um, I know last time I asked if anyone's doing anything for school dances and talked to anyone, has anyone had anything, any uh, any luck or anything like that with school dances? Oh, or I, I with... have. They're okay? I have. I have. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah, I said if you need a DJ for parties, this is for Carolina Forest Elementary. If you need a DJ for parties, let me know. I'll be happy to DJ for you all this school year. I enjoyed the fifth grade glow night this past school year. And one of my friends said, I'll suggest you again when it comes time for the fifth grade dance. All right. See, that that's why I said, you know, reach out. This is the time to start reaching out. Uh, I know a couple school districts, like I saw, I think I want to say L.A., uh, school district out in Los Angeles, out in California, went back to school. So there are schools going back uh, to uh, school. Oh, yeah. My kids go back tomorrow. I am thrilled. <laughs> I'm <Matt>. so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, I know you have a yeah. lot of gear. You go through a lot of gear. Um, how long do you keep gear for and how fast do you sell it? uh a couple weeks i don't know <laughs> um i mean speakers it it depends because i mean it's hard to to hear this stuff like you can only go off of specs but then you can't you don't get to really demo it so i mean i've had like 
10 or 12 different speaker sets for main 12 inch tops until now I finally, you know, I'm set on my, uh, LD stingers. Like those are, those are my go-to tops now. So, um, but I, I mean, I, I go back and forth till I find something I like, excuse me. And then I find something I like and stay with it. So like I've had my, um, you know, I've had my, uh, I've had my dual 21s for three plus years now. So, um, You know, if I, if I like a product, I keep it. And uh, I don't really, I don't really replace something until it needs to be. Uh, lighting, I try to upgrade every year at least, uh, sometimes twice a year. So I, I always have some new ideas. Uh, I'm always looking to improve. So that's, that's kind of me. I don't really, I, I'm not content to just do the same thing. And that's what I like had uh, talked to some people at DJ Expo was like, um, I'd like to be different. I don't want to be like every other DJ that has, a gig bar and two evolved speakers or uh two totems Bravo. with two totems with move whatever or two totems with movers um or anything like that so like brettley always has a unique setup i have a unique setup like um that's what people say oh your lighting's so cool it's always different yeah because every venue requires something different um you know it's not let me bring this or rent this it's like what you know what i have subwoofers which one do i bring what speakers do i bring um so Uh, yeah. So oh, yeah. DJ, having, so having multiple having multiple tools in a toolbox does help because then you can't use everything you know, for everything. You, you have to have different looks and different setups. And you know, I know Jeff has different setups. I, I know uh, Jordan and Taylor have some different setups. Uh, even cool thing, you know, he has yeah. some different I looks and setups. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's one of the things having multiple multiple pieces of item. Uh, multiple tools, multiple speakers, multiple setups is a good good thing to have, and that's what you know anyone should have. Uh, you know, Dwayne's got multiple stuff. And I know uh, Dwayne; he goes back. Uh, to, he goes back to school as a teacher soon, and he also, I think it's the end of the month. He had he retires, or is it next week or week after next? But he retires soon from uh, teaching, so he don't have to worry about you know going back to school. But uh, going back to the school thing. Uh, I'm glad that uh, not so bad, Taylor. That uh, you and Jordan are going to be uh, kill it free during the daytime, where they go back to school and learn and uh, exercise their minds and uh, learn about uh, math and reading and science and all the fun stuff. But oh, yeah, uh, they're gone. They're going to be gone. <laughs> I know the kids are always like, "No, no, I don't want to go back." I was the same way, you know. It's like, "No, yeah. I don't want to go back." <laughs> Do I have? I to? can't wait. <laughs> Mom and dad is like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I know uh, Jeff, he's got uh, his uh, kids with uh, playing sports and stuff like that. And I uh, go out there enjoying watching them uh, play sports and stuff like that. But uh, Jeff, as another parent, uh, you also enjoy them going back to school, too, because that way, uh, you know, they, they go and get and learn and educate them, educated and expand their minds. Um But uh, as a parent, uh, and Brentley too as a parent, uh, so we got, you know, four parents here. But of, of the four of us as parents, um, I'm sure all of us do miss their kids a little bit. You know, when they go back, they're like, oh, they're not here. It's kind of quiet. But then miss you're like, yes, it's gone, quiet. But then want them gone when they're around. <laughs> Human nature. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, It, it, it's it's always fun. Now, really quickly, this is the uh, yes or no question for tonight. Um, Dwayne is doing one school. And no, yeah, he's still. Uh, oh, here comes Mister Dixon back in. Yes, he reset his computer. <laughs> uh, maybe it's an up. Maybe it's an upgrade. I had that today. I'll get him in here. Oh, there he is. Welcome back, sir. We missed you. Yep. You you know uh, what's going on with Spectrum. <laughs> uh, you retire. Was is it next week or week after next? Your last week. Two weeks. Two weeks. And then you're officially retired and uh, enjoying uh, life and uh, doing this full time, which is great. Did we lose him again? Oh no. Okay, he's back. But that that's actually a good thing, and you know we. We want you to enjoy yourself, and hopefully you will. And we were just talking about uh, Taylor. Their uh, her children go back uh, this week. Uh, a few other people, their kids go back. I saw L.A. 
started uh, this week. Uh, Tracy said that uh, one of her coworkers or someone she works with, um, they their kids already started school. I'm like, wow, you know, and it's like, wow, that's 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 early. But uh, you know, we 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 may miss the kids going out, but uh, we also again they're in a good place. They're learning. They're getting educated. They're learning the math. Uh, you know, they're learning their uh, reading and re learning their science. And that's the important stuff to have. Uh, really quickly, yes or no question on this one right here. Um, now that, you know, we're out of summer, we still got summer heat and stuff like that. And, and we're going, in, we're going into fall. Um, I just want to see a show of hands. Has anyone had any feelers, people contacting them for Halloween parties yet? Oh, Brentley, yeah. Anyone yeah, else? I, my, my buddy Rowdy wants to come. Uh, wants me to go to Idaho uh, for his Halloween thing. He 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 was the one who did all the production for uh, Colorado's wedding. There you go. Well, you got you got two for Halloween. Anyone else for Halloween? Hunter? Nope. Are you gonna have a Halloween party at your house? Mm, we haven't had one in, since twenty eighteen. Uh, maybe my uh, bug mom and dad say, "Hey, let's have a party." Sit out front, well, set your uh, uh, set the gear up, play spooky songs, well, I, hand out candy. Um, well, my brother and sister, they're all doing their own thing, and we just can't get the family together anymore. We're all off doing our own thing, so we can't get the family together to have a party. Well, so we I'll, tell you, had a party I'll tell you what here. I do. I have uh, one of my uh, older DJ booths. I put it out front. And I hand candy out, and I have uh, a speaker out there. Want the weather's not too bad, you know, and play spooky mu music and hand out candy to the kids. And they're like, you know, it's like, here you go. Here's some candy. Uh, you know, it's it's always a fun part, you know, giving stuff to uh, the local uh, kids coming <laughs> yeah. here, you know, all my neighbors, and saying <laughs> hi to everyone and uh, having some fun and having them listen to some uh, great uh, spooky music. You know, it's always fun. Well, but I can't. Yeah, I can't do that in my neighborhood because all of my neighbors are like old people from up north. So yeah, we don't really do stuff like that. I get, I get. There, there's tons of kids around here. You know, it's I have a lot of neighbors. I have younger yeah. kids, and it's nice. Uh, you know, when my granddaughter comes over here, she can go find friends to play with. So it's like you go play, you go play with, go play with someone. You know, <laughs> 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 that's the one blessing of being a grandparent now. The uh, my daughter's old enough that she now goes through the uh, the fun that I went through when she was the same age. So it's it's, it's good. Wow. Oh God, this hour goes by so quickly with everyone. I'm glad to see everyone's here. And mm -hmm. again, I hope uh, I, I hope Jordan feels better. You know, and uh, you know, and uh, thank you so much, Taylor, for coming in tonight. Uh, we gotta get you guys back together. We need the power team together. You know. I know yeah. it's weird when we're not together. We're yeah. like, yeah, yeah. we're better as a pair. I'm not as interesting without No, Jordan you next. are. No, you are. You're cool. We, <laughs> we, we all we all love you. We love your husband. You guys are. We, I, I love everyone here. That's why everyone's on this show because everyone's great. And I, I just want to thank you guys all. I want to thank you out there watching the show. Please, like I said before, leave a comment down below. And I know I got a comment for today's show. I did not get a chance to go through everything. I've been busy with some stuff. Uh, I will have that question for next week. So thank you so much. Other than that, hopefully you're enjoying yourself. And I'm actually going to have, uh, you know what? I had you, Hunter, last week do it. I'm going to have, have Taylor take us out tonight because, you know, she's awesome. Taylor, take us out for the end of the show, if you don't mind. Well, thank you everyone for watching. You know, to the parents out there whose kids are going to school, it's great. Um, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye. Good night, everybody. Peace. <laughs>